Hey everybody, what's going on? So I was just uh, scrolling through X earlier today and uh, Pierre Polyev made a post and it says, after nine years of Trudeau, Canadians are paying more in taxes than anything else. And then there's a sign there for a petition signed to cap spending, cut waste, and ask the tax to bring home lower prices for Canadians. There's a Toronto Sun article about this. It's called Emptied Out. I wandering Fraser Institute reports find Canadians now pay more in taxes than housing, food, and clothing combined. So I pulled up this article here. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. I don't want to bore you guys, but I, I do want to just read a little bit here. Um... <clears throat> So it says the average Canadian family last year spent more of its income on all forms of taxation, 43%, than on basic necessities such as food, shelter, and clothing, combined 35.6%, according to a new report by the Fraser Institute. For an average household with an income of, of $100,009, which includes families and unattached individuals, that amount of a total tax bill of 46 thousand nine hundred and eighty eight dollars in 2023 compared to a total of just about thirty nine thousand for shelter food and clothing the study by the fiscally conservative think tank said that the total tax bill paid by canadians has increased by two thousand seven hundred and five percent since 1961 faster than the increase in incomes of shelter, food, and clothing, and consumer price index, which is 901%. So, of course, things are going to be a little bit more or a lot more expensive than they were in the 1960s, but this is getting out of hand. I mean, th this is insane. Like, we've never seen anything like this before, ever. And it, Trudeau has, just, he's just taxing Canadians to death. We're paying more taxes than everything else combined. That's insane. I understand Fraser is a conservative institution. But if this is wrong, let me know in the comment section. I mean, it seems like it's right. I mean, we're paying a lot in taxes. I mean, I'm sure everyone's noticing it. Their paycheck's worth less. They're paying more for groceries. They're paying more for gas. Paying more for rent, of course. But the taxes are even more. And yet you're still going to have 20% of this country, a bunch of knuckleheads, who are going to vote for Justin Trudeau. There was an update in the polling on Sunday, but not much has changed. Pierre Polyev is still around 42%. Uh, actually, I think I could pull this up here for you. 338. Yeah, so we'll just go over this quickly here. So the conservative projection, 42%. Liberals, 24. NDP, 17. So yeah, the liberals are up by a couple points. I'm not sure where they got that spike from, but you know, this is updated on Sunday. I don't think this news is necessarily going to cause another, you know, a, a spike for the conservatives because most people who are conservative or conservative fiscally, at least, understand very well that taxes have been way, way up. And those people have already moved over to the conservatives, right? So I don't know how many more people this is going to move over. I think once the, uh, the interest rates on housing goes up in 2025, then you'll start to see more people flip over. Then you might even see Trudeau finally be forced out or bowed out, and then they put in Mark Carney, and then he says, oh, don't worry, guys, I'll fix things, and then they get a bit of a bump, so who knows? But, I mean, e either way, you know, it's just nine years of Trudeau, Canadians are paying more taxes than anything else. More than anything else? I mean, it's just, it's it's sickening. I, I remember Canada 10 years ago. It was not this bad financially. It's never been this bad financially before, ever, ever. And it always gets worse with the liberals. Conservative usually, you know, they make cuts and they, they bring it down. Um, I don't know if they're going to do that this time. I mean, who knows? Pierre Polyev's whole campaign is, you know, axe the tax and, you know, all this stuff. But, I mean, how much can he really... I mean, yeah, he can, get, he can cut some taxes, which would be great news. But, I mean, he's not going to be able to make rent what it was nine years ago, 10 years ago. Hopefully he can stop the bleeding, but who knows? Again, he's a career politician. Like I'm not saying I'm a, I'm not a big uh, fan of Pierre Polyev. I like him way better than Trudeau. Do I trust him? No. Now that being said, it would essentially be political suicide for him to not, you know, ax the tax and help a little bit. But if he only gives us just a little bit, that's not going to be enough. And then, then what are we going to do? Go back to the liberals? Or the NDP? I hope not. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, the future looks so bad in Canada. Like, it's so hard for people to have help, or to have hope, rather. 
And if you, in my theory, like, here's the thing, right? You see a lot of mental illness in Canada. And a lot of that, yes, is, uh, you know, caused by, you know, poor decisions or, you know, if, if there's drugs involved, bad diet, et cetera, et cetera. But there's also a bunch of crap in our food that causes it as well. You know what else causes depression? Being hopeless. If you don't have any hope, you're going to be very stressed out. When you're stressed out all the time, that causes inflammation in your brain, which is where depression comes from. So trust me, the more people out there who are hopeless and penniless and foodless, the more depressed they're going to be. The less power they're going to have, the less hope they're going to have. Seems like that's exactly what the government wants. And Pierre Polyev is part of the government. Is he just pandering here and he's going to just do the same things to us? Or just give us a little bit, but then things slightly get worse over time. And then he can just say, well, it was better than Trudeau. I mean, I'd, I I want to believe that Pierre Polyev is going to be a, uh, get, uh, be a good prime minister once he gets in there. I just... Seems like there's a bit of an agenda to make things worse. Now, he's supposedly against that. He's supposedly not a globalist, not an elitist. But again, we'll see. He knows how to play the politics game. He knows how to pander. Is it just pandering or is he, is he the real deal? We need a real deal prime minister. I think we can all agree there. Some of you are going to disagree with me and say, no, I trust Pierre Polyev wholeheartedly. And that's fine. You know, you're allowed to do that. I just, I'm not with you yet. I'm also not with the other side of it, like the populist side of it, where it's like, he's just like Trudeau. I, I don't know about that either. I think he's going to be a little bit better, but if it's only a little bit or not at all, I mean, we're, we're, we're screwed. I mean, I just, seeing these numbers, I mean, it's just like, what do you even say? <laughs> like I was thinking about like writing a script for this video and it's just like, well, I, I, I'm just stunned. We all knew it was bad. But we didn't know it was that bad. Over a, almost a 3,000 increase since 1961. Never happened before in a 60-year span. And it can't ever happen again because otherwise we will be impoverished completely. The middle classes will be gone. If things don't change within the next 5, 10 years, we're all gone. I don't mean dead. I just mean like we're homeless or you're going to have to work two jobs to rent a shitty apartment in a shitty neighborhood with shitty neighbors. I mean, it's just work 16 hours a day, come home, go to sleep, and... What do you get for it? You can pay your rent. If rent doubles again in 10 years, I mean, think about that for a second. You're paying 1500 now, it's three grand. You're going to need two full-time jobs just to pay it. Not to mention what's groceries and gas going to be. Internet, everything's going to be way more expensive. You're going to need to make at least like 4500 five grand just to have a few beers on the weekend with your buddies. You should be able to do that with a with a 40-hour job. Basic job should get you a basic life. I think we can all agree with that too. Just doesn't seem like we get that basic life, does it? And maybe that's what they want. Maybe Pierre Polyev wants that too. Like I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm just having a rough day or just feeling extra hopeless today, but it's just, you know, some days you just feel like nothing's ever going to change and no matter what we do, it's just going to get worse and worse. And if that happens, well, this we're not 20 years away here. Like I said, we're five, 10 years away. Things need to change and they need to change as soon as possible. And Pierre Polyev needs to do a good job. If he's lying here, he'll be out in four years, maybe even less. And then what, the Liberals or the NDP get back in? I don't think the PPC is going to have a, enough support, enough popularity, enough seats in the House to be even recognized. They're not going to get in the debates. I hope I'm wrong. I hope Max and Bernays figures out a new plan or they get a new leader or something. But I mean, it's we need a true populist uprising. Pierre Polyev's pandering to that. Is he going to do it, though, or is he just going to be another conservative, just another career politician puppet? I don't know. I'd really love to talk to him. I should reach out for an interview and ask him some questions. Uh, I don't know if he'll answer all of my questions because I, I, I would ask him, you know, hard, difficult questions. But that being said. I feel like sometimes, like when you talk to someone, there are some people who can read character pretty well. I think I'm pretty good at that. So I would enjoy talking to him. I should really reach out and see if maybe I can, you know, have a even just a 10, 15 minute conversation. I know he's busy, but I, I feel like I, I should reach out for an interview. So maybe I'll do that. And wouldn't that be kind of cool? See if uh, we can get maybe a, a video of that put up uh, one day. So, you know, I'll 
I'll I'll reach out via email and I'll maybe even call his office and see if I can talk to him, prepare an interview. But you know, I just I would I just it just feels really bad right now, and it just feels really 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 shitty to be Canadian, and I, I hate that feeling. I hate sitting here complaining about Canada. This should be one of the greatest countries, if not the greatest country in the world by far. It's not, I'm not saying it's the worst country in the world. It's just like, why are we floundering so much? Like we're just going downhill. I'm tired of it. I think you guys are too. So let me know what you, I'm going to finish this rant now. So just uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I always enjoy reading those. Please also don't forget to like and subscribe. It really, really helps grow this channel. Thanks again so much for watching guys. And I'll be back shortly with another video.